What's up, everybody? I hope everyone's having a good day. I hope everyone is taking care of themselves, getting plenty of nutrition, getting plenty of good food, getting plenty of exercise, staying indoors, wearing masks, all that good stuff, taking care of yourself and your people. Um, I hope everyone is finding some time to get into the studio and get creative, get those creative juices, those creative flow states going on this Sunday. So what we're going to do today is we are going to um, go ahead and jump back into our song in Machine. I wanted to just show you guys a couple of moves that I made while I was um, offloading the video that I recorded in the last video. Um, I simply just made the decision that, look, these kicks and this particular snare sound as well needed to have the same treatment as the... Um, main kick and snare sound. So I applied, I just copied this, you know, this Sheps or Neve plugin. I just took and copied it down to here, and that's it. I took and copied this reverb down to here, and then I recolored them on the actual uh, interface just to, again, give me some idea of what I did. So for you guys, that wonder kind of how I come up with the sounds or whatever. I just, I try to just hear what I don't like sometimes, or maybe I just catch it. Maybe it just strikes me and I'm like, oh, I think it should sound like this. And then I make a decision about that real quick. Not too much thought, but I do uh, then do some color coding to say, okay, these samples that are different colors are either sounds that I've lovingly loaded in here myself or sounds that um, I've changed from the original kit to sound the way that I want. So I wanted you guys to see that. Let's go ahead and restart this. I also wanted you guys to see the next moves I'm going to make, because just listening through to this again while I took a break, um, I want to, again, just take this rhythm to another level so that as we listen to one or two minutes of this, it doesn't sound too repetitive. So how do we do that? Well, I don't want to change the main kick and snare groove. Let's have a quick listen for reference. So boom, pat, boom, pat, boom, pat. I don't wanna change that, right? So I wanna keep that the way it is. <clears throat> but what I want to do is change the accent notes, these little ghost notes that I added for that total ba-bum, ba-bum. But um, for that sort of feel, I want to change those um, just slightly, pattern to pattern. I want, I, I want to really consider the ghost notes, which are going to be in these two lanes for each one. And as you can see, they're the same. I've already gone to some lengths to change the velocity of each of those, right? So they're going to be slightly different. But um, what I also want to do is jump in here and um, literally drag, instead of this accent happening on the kick, drag it over to the snare and drag this one that's on the snare over to the kick and maybe just delete a couple of them and things like that. I just want to make, you know, scene by scene, bar by bar, um, or, or really these are four bar sections, right? It's so a length four. So for each four bar section is real different than the last one. And you can really tell as you're listening to it. So it doesn't get tired. It doesn't get um, repetitive. You know what I mean? So this is a real easy way that you can jump in here and do that. So I'm going to keep scene one is the original, right? Ghost notes position. I really made no changes to that. Let's go into scene two. And... Um, we can actually take it out of this mode and just go in here and have a listen. I had already gone in and deleted a few of these. 
Now I'm just applying that same concept across the board by coming in here and just removing a couple of them. deleting a different one each time and then taking a couple of them and just moving them around what I'm trying to do is just delete a different one each time, pick a couple of random ones and move them around. So now we're going to listen back through it all together and it's going to sound wildly kind of, the, the accents are going to sound wildly different each, each four bars, which is what we want. It's really, really what we want. All right. So going back through in the other direction, just, again, going through each of these scenes, deleting one, picking a couple to move around, possibly delete a second one making those kind of decisions without thinking too much just instinct just random randomness maybe do a few velocity adjustments just whatever whatever strikes Scene 12 is super straight. Not too many accents on that one at all. So again, different. You see, let me just flip through the scenes real quick and you can see the ghost notes changing each time. So that's what we want. If we're going to have a bunch of different scenes, you know, have it have it be real varied. And then let's, let's restart this and play it from the very beginning. So oh, breathe real quick. Give yourself an auditory break. A sonic rest and then punch it. Crank it. Crank it. Freaking love it. Oh, I love it. 
It's exactly what I wanted. I wanted it that bum, but um, but um, you can hear it the whole time. You can feel it and you're, you groove that way. That's what I wanted, but I didn't want those accents to be the same the whole time throughout. So this already has a fantastic groove that you can just kind of lose it in and you don't you don't think too much about the fact that each four bar section you're hearing something a little bit different than the last section a little a little bit different than the whole composition which is real key to having it sound real having it sound human so this is dope i love it all right so now i think we're finally ready to hear some other sounds with this i don't know what do you guys think um, I think I'm tired of hearing just this beat by itself. I want to hear the rest of what I imagined with it, which is some bass, some guitars, some, you guys will see. So let's get to it. I'm going to go ahead and jump into Pro Tools. We're going to dump the audio from all of this, get it recorded and, um, make this happen in three, two. One. All right, here we go, people. Now we are ready to check out recording these drums that we just created in Pro Tools. As we can hear everything still sounding spectacular. So um, that's great. Now what we're going to do is jump into the mixer. And if you guys can remember how we do this, all these sounds, right, are currently headed to the group. So now the tambourine kick, we can send the master or the entire group out. We don't necessarily have to do each sound, but on this kit, we lovingly toyed with each sound and each sound is coming in at crazy levels. And so we're just gonna jump in and start getting this leveled out. So, um, Let's, let's see, how many bars? It's out to 49, yeah? And then just starts over. Yep, all right. Okay, you can see I've already got all my tracks routed from external two down here to external 16. So I'm just gonna set them up. Wherever I see sounds, I'm gonna shoot them out to Pro Tools. Wherever I don't, I'm gonna skip them. And then we'll name them. Level management, people. You may want to take the liberty to go ahead and do that before you assign.
we can go ahead and volume it to taste, we still see the levels are coming through. So that's good. All right, let's just do a quick check on sound three and seven, see if I have anything. Pretty sure that I don't. I see nothing in three so far. Ah, no, we do have something in three. We sure do. Those are the accents. All right, let's get nine assigned and then we'll just assign the others. That's what we'll do. Um, so... Nine goes to seven. All right, now let's get these other sounds assigned. We've got two, three, four, five, six, and seven assigned. Now let's circle back and say 
this goes to eight. This goes to nine. This goes to 10. Let's keep the hi-hats together, actually. So let's say that goes back to group. Let's say that goes to 10. Let's say that goes to 9. See, that goes to 8. That goes to 7. This goes to six. And <laughs> I'm trying not to confuse myself, and this goes to five. All right, so we got the two hats together, which makes um, much better sense to my brain in Pro Tools. And we got this other stuff. So let's go ahead and label these things now. So kick. All right, good. We got the first few of these labeled. And then what's going to eight? Ah, Tom's. Alright. 
And then what's going to nine? That's what is on sound three. All right. So. I forget what scene it's in. So let's find it. It's in this one. Okay, that's what's going to nine. Oh, no, that's what's going to eight. All right, level's all right. <clears throat> um, now what's going to 10? Where does 10 come into play? That's sound seven. So let's look for a use of sound seven. So we can hear that and level it up. No use of sound seven. Just confirm once and for all. No use of sound seven. Negative. All right, so sound seven, we can mute and it has no effect. So let's take that back to the group. Sound seven is muted, we no longer need it. That's already assigned, that's already assigned. Let's go to sound 10. Find where we use this. That one's muted as well. Sound 11. Pretty sure I just saw this in use. Yep, right there. Here we go. All right, sound 11. Let's get this leveled up. Let's get this sent out to Get this one sent out to external 10. Yeah? Yeah, external 10 is not in use. 9 was the last one to be used. External 10. Here we go. We might be able to record this all in one pass since we have enough outputs. We'd be very excited if we can. All right, let's get this leveled. Cool as that sounds, we might drive it up later for some coolness. 
but let's level, let's level it up. All right, that's good. And then number 12, let's move on to sound number 12 and see where we use that. Right here. All right, we're looking for number 11. That sounds cool. It doesn't need to be that loud. All right, let's move on to sound number 13. Let's see where we are using this. Let's just look for 13, 14, 15, and 16. I don't know if I actually used any of these, to be honest. So it's the top of the rack. Come close by using number 12, but not actually going into number 13. Okay, so, so far it's the first four scenes. And I do see number 15 being used in scene four, 16 being used in scene five, but no 13 and 14 usage so far for the first eight scenes. So nine, 10, 11, 12. Just to confirm all scenes, we are not using 13 and 14. We come close by using number 12 and by using 15 and 16 in scene 5 and 4. But 13 and 14, we can go ahead and mute out. They have no effect. We are not using them, so we are free to use those outputs that we would have assigned for pattern 2. There's plenty left to record pattern 2 with our special kick drum that we designed. So we still can do it. So 13 and 14 are muted. Now we just need to go out 11 and 12. I'm sorry, out 12 and 13. And that's a growl sound effects growl I love that all right and let's just kick the volume of that down too and then that's gonna be 13 let's click over to five and all right great that's great we're close Let's just raise it up a touch and we can jack it down in pro tools let's get our level right in the pocket just kissing that kind of 19 negative 19 db mark Almost.
is right there. <laughs> that was obsessively too long to do that. Should take very, you know, very fast. This, this should be a fast process. But, um, we've got it dialed in, fellas. We've got it dialed in. Now we can record at least those drums. All right, we got some cool sound effect sounds going in. Everything is routed up. Whatever is not being used is muted. Uh, so that's very efficient. Now we can flip over to this. And we can just send the group out of this. There's, there's no need to even... We can just go group out straight up. will go in um, number, number that doesn't need to be as loud there we go scoot that down to about 12 for now there that's good uh, oh, maybe nine nah, 12 my instinct was right the first time uh, we may mess with that later in some sections. I'm just saying, go with your gut, people. Go with your gut. Now, that's number 13, nice and assigned. So we're looking for number 14. Let's go ahead and jack the volume this down just consistently with the other. Oh. Here it is, guys, that kick we took so much time to record yesterday. That hot Neve, that hot trash kick, just recorded in lovely high definition audio. Love it. All right. Um, coming in. All right. We got the whole drums recorded. And what do we got here? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen tracks. So we did need the last few. And I can still flip from machine over into the scene grab mode and I can choose whatever scenes I want, hopefully. Let's see, can we do that? Scene. Ah, it's a little difficult to do that actually. We might have some controller, some controller things going on here, but I can still choose between the scenes this way in the software as we are just going through and listening. Um, so that's okay. No sweat with that. Um, and I can still record some kind of variable sounds that way. Uh, but let's get a minute of the general recording. Let's get that underway. And then we can go ahead and hook up some other instrumentation. Um, but let's go ahead and get this recording done and see how we go.
So far, so good. I just want to make sure the levels are a little bit better. So I think we can get them a little bit better. Let's make sure that we can get them a little bit better. So just going to go ahead and do that. Um, let's also see if we can play with our vocal level a little bit and just bring up the volume of this just a tad so that we can hear ourselves a little bit better. Oh, my goodness. Look at that. That sounds great. Sounds great. Um, okay, so that's that's awesome. We can we can deal with that now. We can uh, position the mic where we want. Um, so work in progress, people. Always. Sometimes you just got to go with your gut. Maybe you don't like the way something sounds. Fix it. That's the idea. Um, but okay, let's level check this just real quick once more. That's gold. Let's hit it. Oh man. Oh man. I think that went beautifully. Um so I think we can check out how we did. So let's let's jump in and look at first off let's take away the input monitoring and the record uh, enable. Let's full screen this. And um, I know there was a hit 
that we recorded right at the end. So let me just actually full screen that. And... All right, right there at the end. So we can just shave that off. And then we have the precise end. And then let's full screen that. And um, let's go ahead and make sure that we turn that off. So maybe we won't hear it anymore. Let's see. Let's test that theory. So if we take all these tracks and mute them, yeah. We don't, we don't hear anything. So that's, that's great. I just operated off of Instinct there. I was still routed to my machine drums channel. So take away the output there, no output, and it ain't working. Now it's still running in the background. And guess what? Now I've got all the audio printed. Boom, printed, done, finished. So now what we can do is get rid of this. We can go ahead and hide it. Make it inactive. That'll save us on CPU space. That will save us on um, everything. So, um, yeah, fantastic. We can go ahead and save our work. Man, and now we're ready to jump in here and record whatever we want. Some bass, some guitar, some keyboards, some whatever. So really cool. I'm really excited. Uh, sounding really good so far. Now we can jump in and get a mix if we want, whatever we want to do. But um, yeah, it's turning out really good so far. So we'll keep this vocal channel alive. We'll keep our drum channel alive. This is the work stomp, people. Transferred from machine's brain into Pro Tools' brain. And now we're ready to go. on a Sunday. Until next time.